All right, so I've uh, rewritten the initial definition of education up in the right-hand corner in order to make more room here. Start making connections to uh, this as a statement of the educational uh, goal to philosophy. I want to uh, develop an analogy to uh, a production line. Suppose we think of a, a factory where uh, your, your job is to make something or other. Uh, if you're going to do your job well, then there are certain things that are absolutely necessary. You have to have, so you have a clear conception of what it is that you're trying to produce. You also have to have a clear conception of what your initial raw materials are, what they're capable of. And then you have to have a process, uh, a central process that takes those raw materials and systematically transforms them in, uh, in such a fashion so that you get the desired output, right, so to speak. So I'm going to put a, uh, a production line abstractly right on the, on the board here and say this is at the beginning of the process we have an input. We have some sort of raw materials, right, that are coming in. And then uh, we have some conception of an output at the end of the process, right, what it is that we want to, uh, to come out. And then in the middle here we have, right, production. Okay, so we take the raw materials, we do various sorts of productive things with them, to them, or uh, on their behalf. And then at the end of the result we have the desired output and it's off and running. Now let's draw the analogy crudely to, uh, to education. In the case of uh, education, our input is going to be someone who is young, right? a youngster, right? a child. Right? At some point, the person comes into the, the formal educational system. We then work with the student, uh, on the student, uh, and so forth, whatever verbs are appropriate at this point, through a long process that we call the process of education. Right? And what we're trying to produce uh, is an educated youngster who at the end of the process is an adult. Now, I want to add just a few more clarifying things. Obviously, at the beginning, we're talking in our context about a young human being. Okay. So the first thing we have to do is understand, as anybody in any productive field, understand what our raw material is. So uh, we have young human being coming into the process as raw material. What am I dealing with in my, if I'm a teacher? I'm a kindergarten teacher. I've got 15 or 20 of them show up in my classroom on day one of the new school year. Uh, what am I dealing with? What uh, kinds of beings uh, have I here? What are their capacities? What uh, can I expect of them? And so forth. Well, so we start saying things like the following. Well, young human beings, we know, they have uh, certain needs. So we we'll might start to brainstorm various kinds of needs that they have. And certainly they have uh, various uh, nutrition needs. Right, they can go for a certain amount of time and then they need to have a, a, a snack right, of something like that or perhaps lunch. Uh, and that is a, a physical need. So we can use the symbol phi for things physical in this context here. So one need they have is a nutrition need. It might be the case that they can go for a certain amount of time and then they need to take a break. So they might have a point at which they need to have a little nap. Right, or, or take a break of some other need. Uh, in addition to having various uh, straightforward physical needs, they're more complicated being they have psychological needs. And I'll use the Greek symbol psi here for the psychological. They have uh, curiosity needs, and so they might need certain sorts of stimulus. Otherwise, they get bored and they tune various things out. Uh, they might have uh, various uh, needs for comfort. Uh, if they get overwhelmed by certain amounts of tier of material, and so uh, they might have a, an emotional need right, for comfort right, at, a, at a certain point. We can also specify their capacities. We know, for example, if they are four or five years old, right, then physically they, on average, have a certain amount of strength. Right? We can expect them to be able to lift something, say, I'm just making this number up, up to 10 pounds, but they do not have the physical capacity to lift things that are 50 pounds or, or 100 pounds. So we should be attentive in any sort of physical thing that we're asking them to do to whatever their, their, uh, their strengths are in this case. Or they might have uh, various kinds of dexterity. Right? They might be able to 
manipulate certain objects with their hands, right? Can they hold a pencil or pen uh, in, in such a way as to be able to, to, uh, to write letters and so forth? That would be something that we would need to know uh, if we're going to, uh, uh, to, to educate them. And we also know that they have certain uh, psychological capacities that would be important here. They do have a capacity for a certain amount of abstract thought. Right, they have a fairly well-developed vocabulary by the time they're four or five years old. But nonetheless, they're not yet ready for abstract algebra, let alone uh, uh, calculus. So we have to uh, f figure things out uh, at appropriate capacity level here. And we also know that they may have a certain amount of emotional uh, resilience, say. Right, they are you know, dealing with uh, challenging issues, new circumstances, uh, a certain amount of failures and disappointments, but they can bounce back under certain circumstances uh, emotionally, but that capacity is not unlimited at the age of five. So what we then are doing is developing a kind of chart here. What are the needs of the, of, of the young human being, both physically and psychologically? What capacities does that human being have, uh, uh, both again psychologically and uh, uh, um, physically?